This is the Shure MV7. It's a newer dynamic microphone released in late 2020, and it features both XLR and USB outputs depending on your needs. Not to mention it looks strongly familiar to its older sibling, the SM7B. The question is, does it hold up to the quality of that iconic microphone, and should this be your next one? Well, to figure that out, I think it's worth taking a look at why the SM7B is so popular in the first place. If you're just here for the audio samples or my opinion, I've included some timestamps in the description so you can kind of skip around where you like. But let's go ahead and dive into a little bit of the history of this microphone. Introduced nearly 50 years ago, the Shure SM7 at the time came onto the scene to capture a market beyond the world of broadcasting. You see, at the time, Shure already had two microphones that were loved in their individual industries. Those were the SM5B in the world of broadcasting, and the one you're probably more familiar with, the Shure SM57, which is still found in home and professional music studios all over the world. So if you take the overall design language of the SM5B, make it smaller and a little bit more modern, and then you build upon the cartridge that was already in the SM57, you combine those things and you get the Shure SM7, which is now known as the Shure SM7B, which happens to be the microphone that I'm recording this review on now. What really cemented the SM7 in history was when Quincy Jones gave the green light to Bruce Sweetine to use this microphone on Michael Jackson's studio vocals. Of those vocals, that also includes the Thriller album. And honestly, that was pretty much all it took for this microphone to become one of the most popular in history. In an interview, Bruce was quoted as saying, one of my absolute favorite microphones is the Shure SM7. I recorded most of the big hits of Michael's career with him in front of one of my SM7s. I've been pretty vocal about how much I love that microphone. It's a great mic, end quote. To put it in a little bit more perspective, a good condenser microphone can cost you three to four times the amount as a good dynamic microphone. Now you can imagine once people found out that this affordable microphone was responsible for recording Michael Jackson's vocals, that was really the only cosign that they needed to justify the purchase. But I actually want to play you another clip from Bruce. I have another mic that's a, a little bit peculiar. It's a, a Shure SM7, not a 7B. The current one is is a you know pretty decent microphone, but it's. Uh, not like the original SM7. And I found that the best microphone for Michael was the Shure SM7, mm -hmm. and the original one. So that's that's an interesting choice because that's a dynamic microphone. It is. So in this interview, he actually says a couple of things that a lot of us may have overlooked when making the purchase of an SM7B in the first place. The first was, the SM7B is a pretty decent microphone, but not like the original SM7. And then he said, I found that the best microphone for Michael was the SM7. So not only did he tell us in his own experience with hundreds of microphones that he felt that the SM7 was best for Michael's vocals specifically, he also said that this microphone that we all rave about today is not of the same quality as the original that he used back then. So at least in his eyes, from a quality perspective, this isn't even the same microphone. But at this point, it really doesn't matter because that Michael Jackson story will always be linked to this microphone and will be a reason that a lot of people buy it. Fast forward to 2020 and we are now greeted with the MV7. As you can see, it's even smaller than the SM7B and adds USB connectivity, a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, as well as a touch panel to control your gain. So unlike the SM7B, where you will always need some type of analog to digital converter to get this signal to your computer, the MV7 actually has all of that built into it. And if you wanted to get going with the MV7, all you need is a USB cable. But that's also where the mic is most flawed, in my opinion. And we will touch on that in just a second. In addition to that, the voice isolation technology claims are what really makes this stand out in Shure's lineup. While dynamic microphones usually do a good job at rejecting off-axis and distant audio anyway, the MV7 was dialed up a notch for home use specifically. So in theory, it should actually perform better than the SM7B in certain home environment situations where you may have a loud air conditioning unit or loud refrigerator running. But keep in mind that there's a companion app necessary to take advantage of all the features I just mentioned. The app actually has a full range of controls for the auto leveler, the limiter, and the compressor if you need those types of things. And it does work with iOS devices, but it does not come with the lightning cable necessary to plug into most of them. So you'll need to buy that additional cable from Shure for another 25 bucks or just attach it through a dongle. And that brings me to the one downside of this microphone, in my opinion. And that is, not only does it not come with a lightning cable in the box, it connects via micro USB. Now, I'm sure the reasoning for this 
is way beyond my current pay scale, but I would have gladly paid like another 15, 20 bucks if this microphone featured USB-C. To me, that's like buying a new car in 2021 and then omitting the USB power to just give you the old lighter style power adapters. Makes no sense. But to be fair, for some reason, a lot of modern day audio equipment still comes with outdated USB ports. I don't get it. But micro USB is still very disappointing to see on this thing. And none of that stuff matters if this microphone doesn't sound good. So let me go ahead and wrap up and give you a few sound tests in a couple different situations so you can know what to expect. So here is the uh, key light that sits in front of me. And it's actually pretty noisy. I'm not sure if you can hear the fan, but let me be quiet for just a second. I'm always trying to combat that fan noise with audio. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a test with the uh, two mics here and point it directly at the source, even though that's not the case here, it would be pointed at me, um, but just to see how well each of them do in this situation. Where is that shit? Yeah, they, they had a whole... Remember they turned the lights off? Yeah. Raw's gonna get dark. <laughs> Raw's been... Damn, I forget, that wasn't that long ago. Raw's been trying to fix it for like three years. And they just abandoned it. Yeah. Like, no explanation. Like, Raw Underground. Yeah. It's just gone. <laughs> After the big day. They haven't seen Shane McMahon I mean, yeah, since. You knew what the fuck it was. When they put that trash can... <laughs> In the background, I'm like, this <laughs> is a high production company. Can y'all stop with, let's make it grungy. We're going to fight in the warehouse. Put a, <laughs> put a dumpster in some bins and in cages. Who came up with this shit? Just wrestle. Personally, I think the sound holds up pretty well on its own. But honestly, I think it matches well with the SM7B, especially when you consider that it's $150 cheaper and has all the necessary equipment that you need to make it work essentially. So the MV7 is definitely a solid microphone if you don't have one, but I'm not quite convinced that I would necessarily upgrade if you already have one that you like, like a Blue Yeti or something like that. So I will definitely be keeping mine to pair it with the SM7B uh, for certain unique situations. But what I really find most interesting is this mic's evolution. Just really think about it. We went from this to this, and essentially because of these guys, the design is made from Grammy winning recording studios to smaller home studios, independent creators, and even people who just need better audio for Zoom calls. So what's gonna be the next stop on this microphone's evolution? Probably USB-C. Well, I really do hope you enjoyed the video and you found some value in it. If you did and you would like to support the channel, I would appreciate if you left a thumbs up before you go. And if you're into this kind of thing, go ahead and subscribe because I will be posting more content like this in the future. All right, thanks again for watching. Catch you in the next one. Later.